Hey everyone, let's do July 1940 Japan. Purchases for Japan, they have, they get $36, one militia. They're going to start a Yamoto class battleship. They're going to do uh, move their factory in Saigon from stage three to stage two. They're going to buy two regular marines and they're going to buy two light tanks and one mechanized infantry. And uh, so we, oh wait, I didn't buy any tech rolls for them. Did I want to do that? They haven't gotten anything started, so maybe we'll skip that for them this turn. Uh, they really need all this stuff uh, in production. So let's just go ahead and do that. Um, we've got two combat moves. And we're going to hit the Japanese in two places. Uh, we're going to hit them up north. Um, we're going to hit the communists right here. And we're going to hit the KMT right here. And um, Japanese kind of have a balancing act here. I've got to stop spending stuff on China. But at the same point in time, i got to make the right moves in order to finish off the Chinese with the dwindling forces that I do have. So uh, here, the communists have a mountain defending, a cavalry defending, and a militia defending. So we're going to move in the artillery, the mountain guard infantry, the Mountain Infantry, and the three mechs. And then we need some air support as well. So I'm going to need to get some chips here. So let me be back in just a second. Okay, so I've got three tacticals in Korea and four fighters. So I'm going to split these tacticals into two groups. A group of two and one guy by himself. And this guy by himself is going to go one, two, three into here. He'll have three left in his fuel tank because Japan has long range aircraft and he's coming from an airbase. So he will have three left. <clears throat> um, and then I think I'm going to break these fighters into two groups of two as well. So we'll take that chip out. There's one group of two. There's another group of two. And I will take two of these fighters also into this territory against the communist Chinese. They will also have three left in their fuel tank. That should be enough to take that out. And then my other attack is down here in this territory. So I'm going to move this motor, these three infantry in. One is motorized and two are regulars. And then we're going to move these two fighters in there. They will go one, two, three into there as well, along with these two tacticals. A little more air support down here. And again, they will all have three left in their fuel tank. So that's how that will look. Um, and let me move, which battle do I want to do first? Um, I guess I don't know that it really matters so let's do the battle down here first so let me move that to the battle board and I'll be back okay so this is the battle for Hunan and which isn't worth any money but it is next to Yunnan and uh, Japanese are hoping to surround Yunnan by the end of this turn um, so we've got a motorized and two regulars Downscale to one because it's a mountain territory. Two fighters, two tacticals, 
attacking against a mountain infantry, a regular infantry, and two militia. Japanese are hoping to do it all in one turn. Um, but if not, then um, that's okay too. Not really, but we'll see. So let me see, make sure you can see the dice. Yeah, you can. I'm going to roll my two tacticals first. Seven or less. Okay, so there's a target selected hit and there's another hit. So for the target selected hit, I'll choose that guy. And I'll go ahead and remove that one. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay, two fighters at six or less. There's one more hit. Now, if I could just get one of these to hit at one, that would be great. Um, low odds, but I think I got, what, 25% chance that one of these hits? Something like that. Let's see. And this one was a leaner, so I'm going to re-roll it. And miss. So, they'll take their two militia as casualties. Okay, so now two militia at two or less. Nothing. Infantry at four or less. Nothing. Mountain infantry, five or less. And he does hit. So I'll take one of the regular infantry as casualties. Now, unless we just have catastrophically bad die rolling, we should get this. But we'll probably only have one unit left. So, um, uh, motorized and regular at one. Nothing. Two fighters at six. And there it is. Now, Chinese infantry rolls back four of us. Missed. Okay. So, we grab a Japanese piece of pie. And I'll move all that stuff back to Hunan. Hunan however you can pronounce it, and I'll move all the the rest of the battle, uh, the other battle, I'll move over here, and then I'll be back. Okay, this is an interesting battle, just from a unit perspective. Um, I always forget that in this game, mechs attack slightly better than regular infantry. So these three mechs got downscaled from three to two because of the mountain territory. The mountain infantry does not get downscaled. The artillery does, but he still gets first strike. Um, the mountain infantry gets upscaled due to the artillery, and then they got two fighters and a tactical against a communist mountain infantry, cavalry, and a militia. Okay, so first strike, artillery, two or less. Misses. Um, three mechs and a mountain at two. One hit. Mountain Guard Infantry at three. He hits. That was nice. Two Fighters at six. Oh, they both miss. All right, come on, Tack. Seven or less. Oh, not only that, but he gets a target selected hit, which doesn't matter because you got three total hits. Okay, so let's see what the... Cavalry and the militia can do two or less. Ooh, nothing. Mountain infantry five or less, and he hits. So we will lose. Oh, this is a tough choice for me. I definitely don't want to lose a mech, so I probably have to lose this normal mountain infantry. Um, or do I want to? The mechs defend at four. The mountain infantry would defend at five in mountains. Um, they both cost the same. It's a real question of if they're going to attack me with that fighter next turn. <laughs> um, should I keep the best defending piece? Or it's really a question of do I keep a better defending piece or a piece that moves better? Um, you know what, I think I'll keep the mountain, the better defending piece. Because they both attack at the same in mountains. 
so we'll do that. And then communists lose all those. So I'll move all that stuff back and show you the impact. Okay, there's where things stand. Communist Chinese are down to one territory and one militia. They've only got a dollar to spend. So unless the Russians win lease them something, they're not going to have anything. Um, they certainly have nothing to attack with. Um, extremely unlikely um, that... So these planes are all going to go land somewhere else. Extremely unlikely that these planes would hit these because there's they would lose planes. There's nothing else to attack with. That's communist Chinese. So these planes are probably out of this war for good. Um, down here, um, this territory is not long for the world. In fact, I think you can expect the KMT to pull this guy back into Yunnan. And there's going to be a last stand in Yunnan. The question is, do they want to try to strike out um, uh, and hit um, the Japanese? Um in Gangji, which only has a militia now, but probably will have another infantry uh, by the time this turn is over. Do they want to hit here? Um, do they want to try to hit these guys? Probably not. Uh, it'd be a shame if they didn't try to hit something with their plane, but probably not in a way where they will take something over because um, they got two cavalry and a plane they could use to hit something. But that's about it, right? Um, so let me do non-combat moves now. Um, I think these planes will fly back to Korea like this. And I'm trying to figure out what to do with the other tack. And... Yeah, let's hang on. Let's do some naval moves here first because we're going to have, we're going to do a small, not small, pretty big naval buildup heading towards Netherlands. So, well, before I do that, let me figure out where I'm going to put these guys. Um, I think I'm going to build, no, I'm going to, let me chip these guys out. So I'll have two infantry, you can't even see that, two infantry in Jehol. And so I want one of them to strategic rail move to communist China. And then I want the other one to get picked up by this transport. Boom, back down to here and unload in Gangji right there like that. Then um, we're going to have two transports here pick up these two Marines, two SNLFs and two regular Marines, and they're going to go one, two, three. And they're going to land all that stuff in Hanoi, or no, Saigon, and I need to get a chip. I need to get a card to put all that on because there's no way all that's going to fit down there, so hang on. Okay, so this pretty crowded in there really crowded actually um, this right here right here will be where those Marines go and you won't be able to see them because they'll be off camera um, so that and that and then um, What else? Oh yeah, um, I'm gonna move this transport back here like that. And then this entire Navy, it's gonna go into this sea zone along with those two transports, which I'm just gonna move to their Naval card. Okay, so I've got four Marines and a huge Navy right there. I thought about holding back some of the Navy um, up in Japan. In fact, I may pull back just a destroyer to protect uh, those two 
Um, actually, why don't we leave back? Yeah, we'll leave back a destroyer right here. So hit that destroyer moved from here, one, two, to here, just to protect those transports. And pro I want to start another fleet here, like with my Yamato. I've got a Yamato battleship I'm going to start building. I've got a, a fleet carrier still on stage two that I haven't completed because that increases U.S. income. I've got all these escort carriers that I'm going to get when the U.S. comes into the war. And uh, this destroyer will, will be added to that fleet. Um, and then I think, just to worry the Commonwealth player, uh, these... All these four planes are going to go. Um, they still got three left in their fuel tank. They're going to go. They're in this territory, so they're going to go one and two and land on those carriers right there. Um, they're still in range of, of Yunnan. They're only two away from Yunnan. Um, and, uh, but now I've got tactical flexibility. Uh, and air power uh, associated uh, with that fleet. So I'm going to go ahead and put those air units on the fleet card like that. Pull off the gas gauge like that. So I've still got two tacks, two land based fighters and a tactical here and now I've got two carrier based tacks and fighters here and let's just look at that situation um, for the Japanese heading into next turn so and then I will pull pull the let's make this eh, let's see I want to pull these cards over so you can see what's on them here's the Japanese fleet. Oh, you know what? I can only land three planes. Darn it. Just noticed that. I don't know if you did. You can't even see the card. Um, there's only one fleet carrier and one escort carrier. So uh, one of these fighters is going to have to go back and land in Korea. <clears throat> so I'll do that. Um, so there's the fleet we've got right off the coast of Vietnam. And then in Vietnam, we've got four Marines. So um, if I wanted to go against Netherlands next turn, and remember the two really important Netherlands territories are Borneo right here and Java. Um, I could probably take both of them next turn if I wanted to. Um, the problem is, is that when Japan attacks any other neutral other than China, American income goes up by 2d12. And America's at 40 already, and their wartime income is 62 or 63. And I want to keep them out of the war for as long as I can. It's 63. Um, the other thing, the other option this gives me is... Um, a surprise strike against um, the Commonwealth Navy right there. And um, that's really tempting for me. Um, maybe even hitting them first um, and then coming back and hitting the Netherlands on the way back. Uh, eliminating their fleet, which will not be easy to replace for them, especially that capital ship, which is irreplaceable, this battleship. Uh, they can't build capital ships down here, the FEC. Um, so that's in scope now. Netherlands is in scope. Um, and after I place my units, um, I'll have more Marines up here. And Philippi that puts Philippines in scope. Um, and... I also have to think about Hong Kong, which I really want to do from the land if I can. That's going to be tough, though, because of my dwindling forces in China. The other thing that I'm worried about a little bit is I need to eliminate the communists altogether. To do that, i got to take these pieces up here, which is further away from Yunnan. 
Um, so it'll be interesting to see what the Chinese do next turn to try to thwart me from eliminating the Chinese altogether. And they do have this stupid AA gun, which is a great lend lease by the FEC, which makes me, plus they have a fighter, so I could lose a lot of planes going into Yunnan. Um, so Japan's in a good position, but they're stretched already, and the U.S. is coming, and the U.S. has got 40 bucks now to spend. So um, now whether they spend it on building up for Japan or whether they spend it on more lend lease, who knows. Um, but that is where things stand for the Japanese. Um, so let me go ahead and place my units now. So we've got the Yamoto battleship. So for $7, we put that on stage four right there. Um, we've got two Marines for eight bucks and we will put those right here like that. Um, we've got two light tanks and a mech and I think I'm going to put uh, I want to put one I think I'll put one light tank here and then I think I'll put another light tank and a mech up here in Jehol like that and then what else do I have I can move my factory in Saigon forward one more so I'm only one turn away from finishing that two turns away from building with it so I did that off screen and then I've got one militia and where am I going to put him um, I think I'm going to put him I think I'm going to put him here in Gangji so I now have two militia and an infantry there, which is a decent sized defending force uh, in case the Chinese try to attack me or counter attack me. So there's that. Um, now let's collect income. And Japan didn't go up any that turn, so it's at $34. And I don't believe it gets any bonuses. Correct. No bonuses. And it didn't take any territories worth money this turn either. So no wartime bonus. The other reason I really want to go to war with Japan is I start getting these bonuses. Um, like I've already got those six territories, so that would be another six bucks. Um, I could easily take Borneo and Java and Philippines. That would be another... So I'd be at 40 with these six. With those three, I would be at 56. Um, so yeah, I or 46. So I, I need to go to war <laughs> as Japan. And the more and more I think about it, the more and more I think that um, this Commonwealth Navy right here is not long for the world. Um, this will be interesting to see what, as a Commonwealth, I can do to try to counter that. Um, but the buildup is on for Japan. Um, they've got, uh, they've got a, their entire Navy plus four Marines all right here, ready to strike anywhere in this area. Um, so Japan gets $34 to spend next turn. So let me get their money, put it on their card. Don't think I'm missing anything else. No income increase rolls. Uh, no victory conditions change this turn for Japan. So, by the way, here's where things stand. Common turn at 10, allies at 9, Axis at 7. Uh, but once Japan goes to war with uh, the allies, they'll start getting a lot more victory points. Germany will get more victory points uh, pretty soon as well. Once they start taking uh, Netherlands, Belgium, um, uh, Yugoslavia, Greece, they'll start getting more victory points as well. 
so there's the 34 bucks for Japan. And there's where things stand. Admiral Seabass signing off.